हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट नर्सिंग केयर प्लान ऑन एक्यूट स्पाइनल कॉर्ड इंजरी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल राइट आइडेंटिफिकेशन डाटा अबाउट द पेशेंट व्हाट इज द नेम ऑफ द पेशेंट आफ्टर दैट हिज फादर नेम यू एच नंबर सी नंबर एज एंड सेक्स वॉट इज द ऑक्यूपेशन ऑफ द पेशेंट एजुकेशन एंड देर आफ्टर डेट ऑफ एडमिशन डॉक्टर नेम After that we will write about the chief complaints with which patient had come in the emergency or in the respected ward so chief complaints are written with c slash o in acute spinal cord injury the patient will have extreme back pain due to the injury or he will have the pressure in the neck and head patient will also have paralysis that could be in the right limb or left limb patient will lose the sensation there will be tingling sensation or numbness in the feet and limbs after that what will be the own examination findings of the patient there would be the pain in the neck and stiffness in the neck after that the patient will also feel burning pain that will spread to the arms buttocks or it will radiate down into the legs patient will also feel numbness cramping weakness in the arms loss of sensation or he will feel trouble during hand coordination after that we will write what is the present illness or the history of the present illness so firstly point will be that what is the reason for which patient had come into the hospital or he will seek medical assistance so in it we will write the nursing diagnosis which is the patient had acute spinal cord injury that is caused due to the accident what is the onset of symptoms so here we will write the date after that symptoms means ki patient ko kaun se kaun se symptoms hai usko muscle weak or patient will have the loss of voluntary muscle movement in the arms there will be loss of sensation in the arms bowel and bladder dysfunction loss of movement and there will be also pain due to the pressure in the neck and hand there will be numbness and tingling what could be the precipitating factors means they will accelerate the acute spinal cord injuries that could be motor vehicle accidents falls or due to violence sports and recreation injuries diseases or due to surgical injury after that the next point will be what is the history of past illness the patient had the history of roadside accident and due to that the patient had traumatic brain injury also in past the patient had diabetes mellitus type 2 dm and he had an accident history of stress patient doesn't have history of bradycardia no history of intracranial hemorrhage in road side accident the patient fall from the bike the patient doesn't have history of triggering medication administration the patient doesn't have dehydration and there is no history of hypertension no significant history of past surgery no history of cholesterolemia or cocaine use after that the next point will be personal history means what is the food habits of the patient bathing hygiene is it properly maintained or not clothing the patient is a smoker or not he is alcoholic or non alcoholic after that next point is present medical history means the diagnosis with which the patient had come there was the paralysis in the left limb the patient had extreme back pain and pressure in the neck and head there was the loss of sensation in the hands tingling sensation and also numbness the patient also had muscle weakness and trouble during hand coordination in the family history we would write the we would write about the name of the patient his family members and what is the relation of that particular family member with the patient their age and sex also their health status they are abnormal or they are normal after that we will draw the genogram of the patient and his family it will include patient's father mother self and if he is married it will also include his wife and son or daughter after that we will write the history of the patient's diagnosis and his family so in it acute spinal cord injury the patient had sudden fall from the bike due to roadside accident history of type 2 dm history of stress and the family members doesn't have any significant history 
After that, we would perform physical examination, which will include general appearance, involving color of the skin of the patient, height and weight, and if he had any deformity. Head examination, hair examination, and eye examination. There are the remaining points of the eye examination. After that, we would perform ear examination, nose examination, oral cavity examination. and respiratory system examination gastrointestinal system examination so one by one you can read this i am just pausing this for some seconds after that we would perform neurological system so there are the points of neurological system examination after that we would perform muscular system examination which will involve if there is any numbness muscle spasm paresthesis or muscle twitches or if there is any deformity in the extremities after that there would be a vital charting which will include all the vital signs involving temperature pulse respiration and blood pressure the patient was admitted for 4 days so we have the vital charting of 4 days after that there would be the lab investigations which involve two parts there is diagnostic findings means some test that is ct scan or could be mri and after that there would be blood tests so firstly we would discuss about the diagnostic findings so firstly there is ct scan to see if there is any broken bone or blood clot or if there is any blood vessel damage after that there is mri to see the spinal cord or soft tissues then x-ray to show broken bone or dislocations dislocation means if there is any bone knocked out of the place myelography electromyogram after that we have performed some blood test of the patient so firstly there is cbc means complete blood count which has involved hb of the patient wpc count to see if there is any infection rbc count of the patient and then we would perform viral markers means triple h so firstly there is hbs ag hcv and hiv after that we would perform the liver function test of the patients means lft report of the patient so mainly there is serum bilirubin serum albumin and ast and alt of the patients if there is any fluctuations in the normal value of the patient then there means there is any problem in the patient so after that there is the key point of treatment so firstly we would write about the medication that could be given to the patient so in acute spinal cord injury methylprednisolone is the main medication that would be given so methylprednisolone that could be given iv nasaid gabapentin muscle relaxant antidepressants and painkillers after that the next step would be to provide the physical therapy that would be geared towards muscle strengthening and mobility the patient would be provided support with assistive devices such as wheelchairs walkers and leg braces use of adaptive devices for the communication and to the painful area there would be heat and ice applied to the patient after the treatment we have come to the nursing diagnosis so first nursing diagnosis is the patient have ineffective breathing pattern related to the weakness or paralysis of abdominal or intercostal muscles ya fir inability to clear secretions second nursing diagnosis is the patient had impaired bed and physical mobility related to the motor or sensory impairments the patient is on the risk of injury related to motor and sensory impairment urinary elimination is impaired due to the inability to void spontaneously the patient is having constipation related to the presence of atonic bowel as a result of autonomic disruption the patient is having acute pain related to treatment or prolonged immobility autonomic dysreflexia related to uninhibited sympathetic response of the nervous system following spinal cord injury and eighth nursing diagnosis is the patient is on the risk of impaired skin integrity related to the immobility and sensory loss after that a nursing assessment is performed which involves that the patient's breathing pattern and strength of the cuff 
लंग्स आर ऑस्कल्टेटेड बिकॉज पैरालिसिस ऑफ एबडोमिनल एंड रेस्पिरेटरी मसल डिमिनिस कफिंग सेकेंड पॉइंट इज द पेशेंट इज मॉनिटर्ड फॉर द चेंजेस इन द मोटर एंड सेंसरी फंक्शन एंड फॉर द सिम्टम ऑफ प्रोग्रेसिव न्यूरोलॉजिकल डैमेज इन द अर्ली स्टेजेस ऑफ एस सी आई वी हैव टू डेटामिन वेदर द कोड हैज बिन सेवेयर और मीन्स द एक्सटेंट ऑफ इंजरी वी हैव टू एसेस इन द नर्सिंग डायग्नोसिस इफ वी हैव टू डिस्क्राइब इट फर्स्टली देयर इज नर्सिंग असेसमेंट which is having subjective data it is the data which involves the patient is talking to you means he is stating their complaints to you and in objective data there is information which we would get after the assessment of the patient so in the nursing assessment in subjective data the patient is complaining about the raised bp or we can say bradycardia and pounding headache and after the observation we have find out that the patient is suffering from autonomic dysreflexia due to the blockage of sympathetic response nursing diagnosis is that the patient is having autonomic dysreflexia related to uninhibited sympathetic response of the nervous system following sci as evidenced by the condition of the patient so in it what is the nursing goal the main nursing goal is that we have to early recognize the autonomic dysreflexia and absence of complications nursing planning in it we would plan some points that we would have to perform first point is that the patient should be placed in a sitting position to lower the blood pressure and nursing implementation is after the apply of the nursing planning so first point has been implemented sitting position has been provided to the patient to low the blood pressure second point in nursing planning is to perform rapid assessment to identify and elevate the causes third is label the medical record with a clearly visible note about the risk of autonomic dysreflexia we have to examine the areas of the skin of the pressure or broken skin to empty the bladder and administer the ganglionic blocking agents slowly by the iv roots and instruct the patient about the prevention of sci in nursing implementation we have implemented that points so second point is that we had performed rapid assessment to identify and alleviate the cause medical record has been labeled skin has been examined the bladder has been emptied and the patient has been instructed last is the nursing evaluation so we have to gather all the information about the improvement of the patient so here in it we have recognized that the patient the patient recognizes about all the manifestations of the autonomic dysreflexia if they are occurring to the patient that will include headache diaphoresis or the nasal congestion second nursing diagnosis is that the patient is having constipation which is related to the presence of atonic ball as a result of autonomic disruption it is evidenced by the communication with the patient in nursing assessment subjective data is involving that the patient is complaining about the problem during the passing out of stools and the patient is having pain during defecation objective data after the observation we have found out that the patient is having constipation due to atonic ball the main nursing goal is to improve the ball function and absence of complications in nursing in nursing planning the main points are we have to insert the ng tube in the nose of the patient we have to give a high calorie and high protein diet to the patient we have to increase the gradual amount of food we have to administer the prescribed stool softeners which could be dulcoflex or lactulose solution we have to avoid neurogen neurogenic paralysis of the ball we have to monitor the intake and output chart of the patient we have to arrange regular follow ups of the patient in nursing implementations ng tube has been inserted to relieve distension and prevent vomiting and aspiration second is patient has been provided a high fiber and high protein diet 
amount of fluid has been gradually increased neurogenic paralysis of the bowel has been avoided input and output chart of the patient has been maintained nursing evaluation includes that the patient regains its normal bowel function and it reports the regular pattern of bowel movement and it consumes adequate dietary fiber and oral fluids here we come to the third nursing diagnosis which is the patient is having ineffective breathing pattern that is due to the weakness or the paralysis of intercostal muscles and due to the inability to clear secretions of the nasal way so in the nursing assessment the subjective data is including that the patient is complaining about the problem during breathing and he is having excess mucus objective data after the observation we have find out that the patient is having sob which means shortness of breath and irregular breathing pattern due to the weakness of intercostal muscles in this nursing diagnosis our main nursing goal is to improve the breathing pattern and airway clearance nursing planning nursing planning includes to measure the vital capacity and monitor oxygen saturation through pulse oximetry we have to monitor the abg means arterial blood gases we have to clear bronchial and pharyngeal secretions we have to give chest physiotherapy when patient is unable to generate sufficient expiratory pressures we have to provide assistance while coughing we have to assess the patient for signs of respiratory infections which will include cough and fever we have to closely monitor the patient's respiratory status in nursing implementation after the implementation of the nursing planning the vital capacity has been measured and oxygen saturation has been also monitored through pulse oximetry abg has been performed to monitor arterial blood gases bronchial and pharyngeal secretions has been cleared to avoid atelectasis chest physiotherapy has been also given patient has been assisted while coughing patient's respiratory status has been monitored in nursing evaluations it demonstrates that the gaseous exchange is a been in improvement and clearance of secretions as evidenced by the normal breath sounds on auscultation fourth nursing diagnosis is impaired bed and physical mobility which is related to the impairment of the motor and sensory functions which is evidenced by the condition of the patient in nursing assessment if we come to write to the subjective data the patient is complaining about that he is unable to move sometime or having trouble during movement on observation in objective data we have find out that he is having trouble during movement due to motor and sensory impairment if we came to the nursing goal our main nursing goal is to improve mobility by taking accurate measures in nursing planning we have to reposition the patient frequently to stabilize the spinal column after using and we have to remove the splints and reapply it after every 2 hours to prevent the external rotations of hip joints we have to apply trochanter rolls we also have to monitor blood pressure during the change in the positions we have to avoid contractures during muscle paralysis we have to implement passive range of motion of exercises in nursing implementations after the stabilization of this spinal column the patient has been repositioned frequently after every 2 hours splints are removed and it has been reapplied after every 2 hours trochanter rolls has been applied to prevent external rotation of hip joints bp has been monitored during change in position contractures has been avoided if the patient is having muscle paralysis in nursing evaluations the patient moves within the limits of dysfunctions and demonstrates completion of exercises within functional limitation bibliography includes means which are the sources for gathering information so here are some books or journals or some google links that we have searched so you can write it from here thank you